We live in Georgia and we have a beach house in St. Croix for the last seven years. So we have loads of places that we recommend as our favorites to go and see and do. I hope you've had a chance to watch our first video on where to go in St. Croix because it has all kinds of information of some of the first things that we did and that we absolutely recommend to everyone. But so if you haven't seen, you're going to want to watch it too. In that one, we told you that our very favorite thing to do was to go parasailing. And our second favorite, actually they're almost tied, is to go and take a tour into the rainforest by Jeep all the way to the tide pools. And it is an adventure you're never gonna to wanna to forget. And you're gonna be sure that you're gonna contact Tan Tan Tours. They have excellent guides. Everyone that we've sent to them loves them. And what's really neat is that afterward, Afterward, where you're going to be meeting up and finishing the tour um, into the rainforest is you're going to be at a bar, which is a cabana bar right in the middle of the rainforest. And that's where the famous beer drinking pigs are. You can see here where we're feeding them be cans of beer. Actually, they drink O'Doul's or they would be drunk all day. And so you're going to you're going to meet up there to go on the tour to the tide pools and through the rainforest. And then that's where you end as well. Um, so that's where your car is parked. And you're going to want to have their excellent burgers and have their mama wanna drinks and feed those pigs because it's just a fun thing to do. Even though it's wacky, you're going to have a good time and want to tell all your friends. There are night shows at a few different locations all over the island where you can indulge in Caribbean fare, uh, which is wonderful. And also you're gonna be able to see the fire dancers and the shows with some of the traditional dancing. And of course the Moko Jumbies, which are those guys that are on stilts and they're really high up in the air and they dance and you get to dance with them. And the most fun is when you go through their legs when you're dancing, you're gonna to wanna to do that too. And make sure you record it for your friends to see. The island has quite a history with many nations claiming it for themselves, starting with Columbus. He claimed it for Spain and the name St. Croix means Sacred Heart. The USA bought the, bought the um, islands from the Danish 100 years ago. Um, they had plantations which covered um, the island with sugarcane. All the work was done by slaves that came over on ships in the 1700s um, and, and early 1800s. You can see the bases of the sugarcane windmills dotted all over the island. So when you see these, these um, cone looking things, that's the base of the windmills. And the picture below is where I'm standing next to um, a mill, which is horse drawn or you know uh, oxen drawn, uh, where they also put the sugarcane through the mill as well. Um, so there was more, mostly there were windmills, but also there were the ones that were done by, um, by animals. Fort Fredrikstad is on the west side of the island. That's where the cruise ships come up to the pier. And you'll see that when you go to do the, um, the nighttime um, tours um, with uh, Lyric Sail, because that's where you can go and see the um, sunset on the, east, on the west side of the island, which is one of the best views. Um, but also right there is Fort Fredrikstad. So Fort Christiansted is in the Christiansted Harbor. Fort Fredrikstad is over where the cruise ships come in. And that's also one of the forts that you're going to want to be able to go and tour. It's just a small fee to be able to go through it. And there's lots to do right in that area as well. If you dive or snorkel, you won't want to miss to sail to Buck Island, where it's one of the most famous um, places to go diving. It's a sanctuary that was done uh, while President Kennedy was in office um, and declared it a national preserve. Um, and so the wonderful thing about Buck Island and really um, St. Croix as a whole is we have the leatherback turtles there. So if you're really lucky, besides seeing all the beautiful coral and fishes, you get a chance to see those huge, beautiful leatherbacks because they're right there nesting nearby. There are three or four different um, boat companies that are right there in Christiansted Harbor where you can um, go ahead and just pay them to take you over to Buck Island unless you already have your own boat. And a lot of them have meals included or rum drinks included. It's a lot of fun. You can do just a few hours. You can do a whole day. Um, there's all different choices. And this is one of the places that um, that takes you out with the Renegade. But also when, I, when we went out, we went out with Big Beer. Big Beards, which is right there um, in the harbor. You can't miss them. And also, I was telling you about the leatherback turtles. The leatherback turtles, one of the best places besides Buck Island where they are nesting, is Sandy, Sandy Point. 
And Sandy Point is all white sand beaches. They're closed part of the year when the nests are there. But if you get a chance and you're there during the year at the right time, you can be part of a group that goes to see the babies that are hatching and going out to the sea. As you can see, these leatherback turtles are huge, like thousand pounds, really, really big. The beaches at Sandy Point are all white sand, like I said, so you can see here the photo that I took showing off my beautiful view of the sea from Sandy Point. Um, if you get a chance, you're going to want to go there, take your snorkel gear. Again, it's closed about half the year, depending on when the nests are filled with eggs. And of course, that's important because we need to be able to protect these beautiful species of turtles. There are so many views from the hills all over the island of the harbors. As you walk around, not only are you going to come across hens and roosters and iguanas, but also you're going to see a lot of these thin yellow or red bricks, mostly yellow in um, the Fort Christiansted area. And so you can see this building that was left over from one of the old plantations. It's right near the harbor. It looks like it was an entrance area or perhaps like a fireplace area. Um, but you can see the little yellow bricks in there. And what those bricks are, those are ballast. Now ballast has a sad history because what ballast was used for is extra weight in the slave ship ships because slaves were not heavy enough cargo. And so whenever slaves were being brought to the island, a whole bunch of ballast bricks were also loaded with them. And when the slaves were brought off the ships, all those ballasts were piled into the port area and they're just left there for anybody to be able to use. And so when you're traveling and looking around and touring the island, you're going to see lots of buildings that are made from the ballast, lots of floors and um, in different buildings like churches. Also, there are walls and uh, fences that are made from them. And all of that is ballast from the 1700s and eight, early 1800s that were brought over when the slaves were brought over. There are a few farmer markets that go on each week, and the biggest one is in the Lorena area, which is also home to the famous and iconic chicken shack, which has a huge rotisserie of chicken that are going all day. I mean, like a hundred chickens being done at the same time all day. You're going to definitely want to go and have their wonderful cuisine. The sides included are Johnny Cake, Saltfish, Oxtail, a whole lot of local favorites, and that's in the Lorena area. So go to the farmer's market there and also check out Chicken Shack. Christian Sid Harbor is beautiful day and night. There's music to listen to, and they do a free concert in the gazebo that you see here at the last Friday of each month. And you can sit in the grass area, you can bring your own food, you can bring wine, beer, you are allowed to drink all over the island. Um, there is no restrictions on doing that. So you can also bring beer and wine when you bring your picnic um, to listen to the music. And this location, this gazebo is right in front of Fort Christiansted in the lawn area in the harbor. And this other photo is a beautiful twilight um, a photo of the harbor area. Um, just after we had had pizza, I looked back and saw how beautiful it was and got a really great shot. You're going to love all of the food and drink and all of the restaurants. They're mostly casual, but like I said in the first video, there are some that are fancy. So when you do pack to go, you're going to want to dress most, you know, dress mostly with casual like t-shirts and um, t-shirts and shorts and sundresses. But you'll want to bring something a little bit more upscale, um, like a nicer sundress and maybe. Um, like a nicer Hawaiian shirt um, to be able to go to some of the fancier places. Okay, this was one of the most fun things we did recently on our last trip is we went to the crab races at Brew St. Croix, which is a restaurant, a two-level restaurant right in the harbor. And what they do is that you actually go, you can see I'm choosing a crab right there. You can choose three crabs. It's like $5 to have your crabs race and they have lots of races. So your crab gets like 20 chances to try to be the first one to go out of the circle that you see that has been made here on the floor of the restaurant. You guys, it's a hoot. Go do it. It's every Wednesday night at Brew St. Croix. And um, you'll you'll always remember you did it. And hey, my crab won one of the races and I got a free drink and I got a couple of other free things. So they do have some really good, um, really good prizes too. 
Okay, so here's a shot of the Mocha Jumbies that uh, perform at most of the evening shows where they also have the fire dancers and Caribbean music. So when you see the um, go, the St. Croix, Weekend St. Croix brochure, which you'll find all over the place each time that you go, it shows when the Mocha Jumbies are performing and where and what hotels and what locations on the beach that they'll be performing. And you're going to definitely want to go because it's a fun show, great Caribbean food and music. And also, we have horses on the island, and they will take you for a ride along the beach and even go into the waves, and also a ride into the rainforest. So you're going to want to take a look. There's two different companies that have the horses, and you're going to definitely want to choose one of them. They're both great. So there are three activities that we have yet to do. Even though we've been many, many times to the island, there are some things we still haven't done yet. The first one is we haven't taken one of the float planes to St. Thomas. Um, and they, they go all, all day long back and forth between um, St. Croix and St. Thomas. And what's cool is when you take the plane over there, then you can also take a ferry over St. John, which is a national park, U.S. national park. Um, and that's an easy trip. It just literally takes like a half hour to go across. And so we we're looking forward to doing the float plane and you can go ahead and get reservations. You'll see the phone numbers in again, the uh, brochures that are handed out the pamphlets for the week. The other thing we've not done is we've not done deep sea fishing. And I've been told and I've seen on the port people are bringing in huge, beautiful fish. And so if you are into it or you want to give it a try, there are like four different companies that go out on an, uh, all day long and you can choose the, you know, from the different ones of how long you want to go out for a full day or for just a part day. And um, here's just a shot of, of uh, one of the catches by these guys and they must have been really excited. The other thing is, is I've been snorkeling on Buck Island and also snorkeling in Cane Bay because um, our island is surrounded by reefs, so there's lots of places to snorkel. But I've not gone scuba diving because I'm not certified. However, people love to come scuba dive in, on St. Croix because there's a lot of shipwrecks. And of course, we've got Buck Island, so that you can go see more things than someone who's snorkeling. And, um, and the shipwrecks plus all of the reefs that surround the island. Um, so those are the three things we haven't done. When we have done them, I will do another video, but I hope you'll check those out as well. You're going to love St. Croix. Come as soon as you can. Come often.